Hello, Daughters of Utah Pioneers. On behalf of the ISDUP Board, we would like to welcome you to our training for the 2020 year. This training video will focus on new or updated resources, changes to forms and reports, and the updated format and reorganization of the ISDUP.org website. We won't be able to go into great detail about each office as we are able to do in our face-to-face -face trainings, but at least you will learn of the significant changes that have been made, and most importantly, you will know where to access the information. Over the past few months, we've been working to create new information, update current information, reduce some reporting and paperwork, and make our website a little more functional. We're excited to share this new information, and we hope that it will assist you as you fulfill your responsibilities as camp and company officers. So let's get started. As we go through this video, you will be looking at the isdup.org website on your screen. You will be seeing me move from one area to another using my mouse, which will move this arrow or a cursor around on the screen. Sometimes the arrow turns into what looks to be a hand or a line. So just be ready to follow the arrow as I move from one area to the next on the website. Our website looks basically the same, but there are three areas with significant changes. These are in the Home tab, a new Leadership tab, and a new Forms tab. I'm going to first go to the Leadership's Leadership tab. As an officer in DUP, you are providing leadership. This new Leadership tab has been designed to provide you with information and tools to help you as an officer. In the past, you have received information from ISDUP, which was distributed to companies as a photocopy, or in recent years, it was posted to the website. This has been called the President's Packet. Moving forward, the information in this packet will now be integrated on the website, and the majority of that information will be found under this new tab called Leadership. In DUP, there are four areas that change from year to year. Those areas are music, parliamentarian quotes, lessons, and chaplain thoughts. So moving forward, that information that changes significantly each year will be under this leadership tab. For example, music can be found here. You'll see information on ordering the music CD. You'll see the month, the song title that we are to be singing, and where that song might be located. By clicking on each of these links, you will also find the sheet music to each song. Even if it is in our songbook, you can find the sheet music to each of these songs and print that off each month and be prepared to sing the songs. Down here, it's important to note that there's a history or background information on each of the songs. If you click here, It'll bring up a document that you can print out and have ready as you read about the background on each of the songs that will be sung each month. We're excited to share with you the information, this information and our ISDUP music leader has selected songs this year that correlate to the lessons. So music under leadership. I'm going to go next to lessons. This is a similar looking website page. And here you will find information on ordering the lessons. You'll see the month that the lesson is to be given, the lesson title. This year, our photos that accompany the lessons will be posted at the beginning of the year and will be left up the entire year. So we're excited to announce that change and we hope that you are enjoying the lessons in both spiral bound and hard copy. And we appreciate all of the work that our lesson committee does in preparing the lessons. You can also access the photos by going to our photos tab. And many of you have accessed the photos this way in the past and they will be accessible here as well. 
Back to leadership tab, parliamentarian quotes. Our ISDUP parliamentarian has put together a number of quotes that align with our commemoration of the women's suffrage crusade that we are celebrating this year. Each month there's a quote that you can provide before you give your pledge. So this is a two page document that can be printed off and referred to as you give your quotes. Chaplain thoughts is found here. Our ISDUP chaplain has come up with a number of thoughts that can be given before the prayer is offered. These thoughts are not necessarily correlated to the month that they should be given. Rather, she's giving you a lot of flexibility in choosing the thought that you think is most appropriate. And by the way, there are more thoughts than you will have meetings each year. Under the leadership tab, there are two very important areas that we want to make sure all of our camp officers and company officers are aware of, and that is the camp officer information and company officer information. In the interest of time, I'm not able to talk about both of these. I'm only going to be talking about the camp officer information, but know that this link here has parallel information and by going through this link, you'll be able to understand and access the information under the company officer link. As you jump to this page here, this has information for all of our officers in the camp level. Down below, you'll see a list of offices. And if you click on here, you'll find specific detail on the responsibilities of each of those offices. Above here, you will see general information about um, a camp or a company. In this instance, we have um, information, of course, on camps because we are on that page. We have a document called the purpose of camps. We have another document that's called the Pur purpose of companies. And we would encourage you to look at this document, regardless of the office that you hold, so that you get a little bit better understanding of the purposes of the organization which you're serving. In this instance, just in a couple of pages, you'll be able to be reminded of what our camp monthly meetings are all about, some ideas of how you might organize your year and have people sign up, a reminder of the offices that are in the camps, the relationship of the company to the camps, we give you some idea of some terms like Jubilee, seminar, and this last page gives you a list of documents and forms, and then information on ordering items that you'll need. So again, this top part is general information. Down here is specific information. There are two pages here that are just one page documents that I'm going to bring up quickly. Camp Board Planning Guide helps you in calendaring your year. So look at this, kind of big picture items. This calendar is not specific to any particular year. So from year to year, you can look at this and come up with your own specific calendar. This next item is important for camp captains, company presidents, secretaries, and treasurers as they keep track of the reports that are due and when. So there's a column here for deadlines, the report, who prepares it, and where it ultimately ends up. This top part is for camps. The bottom part is for companies. So for example, in June, there's a camp statistical report that is prepared by a secretary, and it comes to the recording secretary at the company level. Down here, the company's recording secretary should be aware that there's a report coming from the camps and get that prepared by June and it is sent to ISDUP. So again that gives you an idea of the format and you can read the details when you have more time. We're excited to announce two new documents on elections for camp elections and company elections. In a couple of pages you'll be able to um, 
find out information on running elections at both of those levels. We have put together a flow chart that gives you, uh, again, just some ideas and almost a check sheet of what needs to happen at each month in order for you to install the officers on time. Attached to this document is a ballot and a detailed sheet on how to run, conduct, run your, your elections. So general information up here. As we move down here to camp officer responsibilities, the best way to describe these documents is maybe just clicking on to one of the documents and going through the format. And I'll choose historian for today. And I'm not going to go into detail about the, what the historian does, but mainly just talk about format. Each of these documents will have a brief introduction and give you some um, information on the Constitution and bylaws and your responsibilities as outlined in the Constitution. Then you'll jump to responsibilities. And in one page or page and a half, our board has tried to put together resources and information and bullet items to assist you in knowing what your responsibilities are. For the camp historian, there are three responsibilities listed, and I'll explain just briefly what this means. A camp historian has a responsibility here and a responsibility here. They basically help encourage writing histories, and then they help submit those histories. At the end of each document, the last responsibility is a list of resources found on our website. And these are mainly forms or other documents that you need to be aware of. So our historian needs to be aware that there's a few forms that they need to look for and be aware of. So that basically gives you an idea of the format. Introduction, summary, responsibilities in a page or a page and a half. In many of our documents, we have tried to put together a visual, a flowchart, a table, a deadlines uh, table, a graph of some kind. In this instance, there's a flow chart that will help this office understand a little bit more about what they're doing and where things flow to in regards to, in this instance, the histories that are submitted. So again, just trying to go over the format of each of these documents, you will find information at the top, responsibilities, the chaplain presents a thought, provides a prayer, and this is where you'll find your, your in information that you need. The registrar, this is a little bit more detailed with some checklists of how you send in those new membership applications. But in a page and three quarters, you'll be able to find out all of the things that you need to do, followed by a flow chart our um, secretary similarly. So again, I'm not going into any detail about what you're going to do, but know as you click on to each of these documents, you'll have details on what it is you are supposed to do to carry out your duties. We wanted to point out that the treasurer is a very important position in our camps and companies and our camp captains and company presidents need to be aware of the information that is provided here in the treasurer's area. Anytime that we're responsible for money, we want to make sure that we're doing it right. And in this inform information provided is information on bank accounts, on um, reports that are due. Um, one thing that you might not be uh, uh, familiar with is that things like raffles change. There's regulations on raffles uh, from state to state and in most cases you have to be careful about doing raffles and there's information about fundraising. Many of our companies have museums and have large collections and cabins and sometimes they need to have um, events that raise money or they solicit grants and IRS information is very important for those of you who fit into that category. So just a shout out for this information here. So I'm under leadership, camp officer information, and know that company officer information looks the same. Hopefully that's enough information for you to know that there is 
detailed information on each of the offices that you'll be performing in the camps and the company. Under this leadership tab, you can find constitution and bylaws, ideas for jubilees and pioneer days, and a comprehensive list of companies and camps. As you perform your duties, you'll find that you're gonna need some forms. And we separated the forms under, under a new tab just called forms. I'm not going to go into district convention forms at this time, but I am going to briefly mention a couple of things as you look down this list of forms. Our histories form can be accessed by clicking here or going over here to the histories tab and clicking on forms. Our pioneer title page is an important document that you need to make sure is completed and complete out both, complete both pages of those as you submit histories and that information is detailed in your office responsibilities. We also want to encourage you to continue to use the submission logs so you'll find those under the history forms. This next section is called membership dues and we've created a separate section that deals with the information and forms that you need when you process the membership dues. Our company treasurers and camp treasurers are the ones who process dues, but also our camp secretaries sometimes help in updating the membership rosters that are submitted to ISDUP. Also, we need to remind our camp captains and company presidents to be familiar with this information. We have uh, created camp membership dues instructions and company membership dues instructions. We have a form that needs to come in for each of these levels, and then we have an associate roster form here. So just be aware that your dues, membership dues processing information is found right here. I'm gonna click on this briefly and just make you aware that there's detailed information on how the information should be updated and come to us there's new information on what to do if, if a member has moved or moved into a care center. You've had some confusion into the, in the past, and so we've provided more details on that. So make sure you're aware of this document that will give you better information and better instructions than we've had in the past. This last document is a flow chart that helps our camps and companies know when things are due and where they go, and almost becomes a checklist of what it is that I need to make sure that I've done as I am getting ready to send this envelope onto my company. So be aware of this flow chart. Again, some type of visual to help you in performing your duties. That is a very, very quick overview, but just know that under our forms tab is detailed information on processing membership dues. Going down to the secretary's forms, our record change form includes a number of changes that come to ISDUP, which are listed here. We appreciate you using the new forms. If you have old forms, toss them out, go to our web website and access the new form. We want to spend a little bit of time with our secretaries in the camps and companies and let them know of some changes to statistical reports. For camps, this is a significant change. Our camp annual statistical report moving forward is a very simple, straightforward document, forward document that basically asks questions and then you tally the information. Some of you may be saying that that looks pretty simple. What's the big change? But in the past, we almost had our camps doing a spreadsheet every month um, to track information. And the major change is that in the past, we had our camps submit a report in January that was called the semi-annual statistical report. We, in doing research and trying to find out how to make this report easier, we realized that there was not a semi-annual report required in the bylaws. And so it allowed us to be very flexible and change this, this reporting dramatically. So that going forward, only one report, it's due June 15th to your recording secretary in the company. In order to help you keep track of this information, for instance, at the end of the year, you need to let um, your companies know 
how many DUP lesson books were purchased by your camp members. And in order to help you track that through the year, we have helped you with that by updating the camp meeting minutes form. Clicking onto the meeting minutes form, the top part is similar, but at the very, very bottom, there's a space for camp secretaries to briefly summarize some information. They can talk about attendance. They can ask, your camp, ask their camp members if anyone has purchased a lesson book in the last month, and then you'll keep information here and record that information. And then at the end of the year, when you're filling out the camp annual statistical report, you'll take those minutes forms and you'll have the data on each one of those minutes forms and add it up and put the numbers here. We hope that makes some sense. We encourage you to read through this meeting minutes form and the statistical report prior to the beginning of this year so that you have an idea of what will be required at the end of the year. Um, this, this report here, much easy, easier process. In the company annual statistical report, we have eliminated about a third of the questions that were on this form in the past. The top part uh, deals just with information that's coming from your camps on those camp statistical reports. You'll summarize the data, aggregate the data, and put the numbers right here in this column. This section deals just with company activities. For example, how many board meetings did we have? You'll put a number here, put it here, and then that will be submitted and sent to, um, or submitted to ISDUP. One item I want to make mention of is in our bylaws, you are required to send us an updated slate of officers. And in the past, we've had you fill out a sheet of paper that required our secretaries to fill in 10 or 13 names of officers. And we realized in the spirit of making this less complicated that we only needed a handful of officer names. So moving forward, you only need to submit about five or six names of your company officers to ISDUP. And we hope that makes this process a little bit easier. So these other forms are pretty straightforward. We won't spend the time to deal with those today. Going to jump to Registrar and the membership application form. Our ISDUP Registrar has updated this form somewhat. The first page and second page are similar to what you've seen in the past, but the third page has some significant changes. As we are having our daughters, granddaughters, and great granddaughters join D DUP, they are needing to go out to a fifth, sixth, and seventh great grandparent. And the old pedigree chart that we had here became very complicated. And quite frankly, there just wasn't enough space on this page for them to fill out the information that we needed. So going forward, the process will be the same in that our applicant will select a pioneer ancestor from the second page that they have identified. And let's say on the second page, one of the pioneer ancestors that I'm going to show that I am eligible for membership in, let's say her name is Sarah Smith Jones. So Sarah is this applicant's fifth great grandparent. So what we're going to try to do is get to Sarah on this line right here and show the applicant's relationship to that um, ancestor. The applicant lists their mother, their father, their grandparents here. And let's say that Sarah comes through the applicant's mother's father's line. So they've listed their grandparents over here, but it's this grandfather's name that will be repeated here. And then perhaps that grandfather's relationship to Sarah is that it was his um, grand, his mother's line. Next line might be a mother or a father. It doesn't really matter, matter whether it's male or female, nor do we really need dates of birth or death. It's just a, a direct um, line connection with just names connecting you as the applicant through that grandparent to that pioneer ancestor.
The rest of the application looks the same, similar. We want to encourage you to ha have the application instructions accompany the application form when you give that to people to join DUP. And we feel like it's important not only for our registrars to be familiar with this new application form, but many of us are recruiting our neighbors and friends and saying, this form is easy, or sometimes we're helping them fill out the application. So it's important for us all to be aware of all of the rich information here and the changes to this application form. Under treasurers, forms. There are two forms that have been here in the past. Camp Annual Financial Review is submitted to our companies on an annual basis. The companies submit to ISDUP a financial review by June 30th of each year, and this process is the same. Those forms are a little bit different, a little bit um, easier to understand, and we encourage you to look at those and just make sure you are meeting those deadlines. The important piece on this page is that there's a Satellite Museum Annual Financial Review. This report really isn't new in that we have had those of you who have museums and cabins submit a report in the convention reports that have been submitted to us. So again, it's not necessarily a new report, but we are changing the timing in which it comes in. Moving forward, we are requiring this report to come in in June, the same timing as this report that comes to ISDUP. So those of you who have museums will want to take some time and look at this, and we will have some more information coming out from our treasurer at ISDUP, giving you some guidance. This applies to those of you who have cabins, satellite museums, those of you who have separate bank accounts or separate ledgers and um, when we deal with these museums we are soliciting grants and donations and we have fundraisers and we have snow removal and a lot of expenses so we need some accounting and detail coming in from those museums but the process has changed as far as the dates and we'll be getting some information back out to you as far as as how this will all uh, play out, but that's where this new form will be located and the date that it's due will be a little bit different in that it won't be connected to district conventions. However, at your next district convention, you will stand up or your treasurer will stand up and give an accounting or a summary of the data that has been sent prior on this report. So at district conventions, it's simply an update or reporting of this report. And that's a lot of words and a lot of sentences and a lot of stuff thrown at you all at once, but just a heads up to watch for more information on that. Under other forms, we've moved from the secretary forms, this form and this form, because more people access those forms than just secretaries. So be aware of those changes. Awards and pins, we won't take the time to go through all of those. And PDF instructions, just note that it's important to save the file as you uh, fill in these forms. Save the file as another name onto your desktop, and that way you will save the information. You can go back to the form and change it if you need to, but there's instructions right there. Moving on, I'm going to go to our Home tab, and under our Home tab, as in the past, we have Calendar contact us. We've updated frequently asked questions. You can access the legacy newsletter and how to submit articles here. Under outreach, I'm going to take a minute and show you two new resources here. If you click on this link here, there's two pages of instructions or ideas of how to do outreach. And outreach is um, a program that we've been trying to do to help others understand what we do in DUP and our pioneer ancestors. This two-page document of outreach ideas has been in um, the officer responsibilities in the past, but this has been updated and um, is easily accessed from this outreach page. Then also on this outreach page, we have heard from many of you in your leadership roles um, the concern of recruiting new members 
and, and the need to have ideas to recruit new members. So there's a three page document that gives you ideas about recruiting members. Again, I don't have time to go into some of the exciting ideas that will help you in your camps and companies recruit new members. But this third page is what we call a Daughters Utah Pioneers Pass Along Card. And you can write a telephone number, the time that you meet, and have these prepared to give out to your friends and family, those who you might want to be inviting to Daughters Utah Pioneer activities and encourage them to fill out the forms and be a member. There's a separate way to get the application form and the instructions for those of you who are encouraging new members. That's a nice new link. And research resources is found here. We've updated all of the links and added a lot of links here. So as you're doing histories and you are wanting information on where to find information on the Mormon Battalion, on ships that may have come to the United States, that's a wonderful updated resource for you. We have information on markers. We have Days of 47 royalty going back 40 or 50 years. And that's a fun place to peruse. The other tabs have been updated slightly. Um, I'll just quickly share with you. We've moved school tours here. The other information is the same, but rich information. So take the time to, to find out what's happening in our, in our museums um, in DUP, as well as the museum in Salt Lake. Under the histories tab, there's an item I want to show you here. It's this histories resource at the very, very bottom. History's resource is a document that's been updated by our ISDUP historian and others on the board. And in just a few pages, you get information on writing histories, what kinds of histories we like to have, what qualifies as a pioneer, um, what information you can access in our department, how to submit that um, history. The next two pages are very, very simple instructions or ideas on submitting a history and how you might go about that. This page here I think is interesting to add some dimension to our histories like adding what are some of the economic conditions at the time our ancestor was living and add some in interest that way. The last two page parallels the information I just showed you that is on our website except this is in a format that you can print out. You can link from here, but you can also print out. And this is a list of all of those websites of uh, resources when you're writing histories. So that's under the histories tab, history resources. We encourage you to go to the Pioneer History Index and see if we have a history on one of your ancestors. If we do, you can access it. If we don't, you can write a history and some other indexes there. Photos. See if we have a photo of your ancestor. We have a wonderful collection. Also, um, donate photos to us. We'd love to have some of your photos. And then the shop tab, you're all familiar with our shop tab. I'm gonna go back to our main page. And as we conclude this video, just want to encourage you to go to this page for announcements in ISDUP. We keep this updated on a weekly basis and then also make you aware of a bulletin that is distributed to your company presidents at the beginning of each month. It's emailed to them and they are trying to distribute it out to all of you, but you can also come to here, um, to come to this link and access that bulletin. And with that, daughters, on behalf of our board, we want to thank you for all of the service and all of the hours you provide in, in being an officer in Daughters Utah Pioneers at the camp and company level. We hope this information is useful. We hope that it'll help you be successful this next year as you embark on our new DUP year. Feel free to join Facebook and be aware of some of the activities. Feel free to contact us and let us know how we can be of assistance or how we might provide additional resources for next year to help you. We wish you great health and success as we all embark 
in our year this next year. With that, we will say goodbye at this point and wish you a very great day. Thank you so much.